We were looking at some of those really, really close-up videos where it basically looks like we're in a swimming pool standing above them, just crazy. And I think that's when I first noticed that little brown, a little brown stick of some kind that just like sort of happened to be between them. And we were like, oh, that's weird. At the time in the field and even, you know, most, most of the time we had processing it, we didn't really notice much um, other than, you know, they were socializing. And then, yeah, you pointed out that actually J35 has a small, you know, piece of plant matter in her mouth at the start of the, the um, video and, and seems to rub it against them, uh, against J57 later in the video. My memory of the first time we really, you know, noticed something, you know, really interesting was happening um, is we had gotten off the water um, with uh, J-Pod again, and we had had this follow with J-19 and J-51, where I remember saying on the boat as I was watching from the drone, like, wow, they've just been in contact with each other for the last 15 minutes. They've just not really broken contact for more than a couple seconds for this entire follow. That's really interesting. Um, and so we came back, we downloaded, we got everything. And I think you were cataloging the drone video to, you know, say who's in the video, what are they doing, you know, and, and make sure all the metadata was saved. And I think you then pointed out like, oh, there's something going on with this contact. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I remember that super, super clearly. It was like four videos in a row or something of them just in constant contact. It was so, so cool. Yeah, and then I, I feel like that's when we, it was almost like like little puzzle pieces coming together because we started noticing it with the great drone camera, but we were kind of unsure, you know, is this like something new? Is this, you know, just kind of a one-off or two-off kind of situation? Like, you know, is it just something weird they're doing? They do weird things all the time. I think the initial thought was like, oh wow, this is a really interesting one-off observation of these two whales um, swimming with a piece of kelp between them and rubbing a kelp piece of kelp between them. I, I wonder if that's just a thing they're doing. I wonder if that's a thing that they've been doing for a long time. I remember our next encounter with them, we were with that same matra line again, but we didn't have the drone in the air. And we saw them playing with kelp. We saw them rolling around. We saw J41 spy hopping with a piece of kelp in her mouth. And I'm like, yeah. I bet they're doing it again. Um, and then I, I think it wasn't until, it was almost a month later um, yeah. when we had J-Pod going around turn point And I saw, uh, from the drone, I saw J31 and J56 coming together, getting ready to be in contact. I'm like, I should probably see what they're doing. So I switched to the zoom lens and looked in and that's when it's like, oh wow, okay, they're doing it again. They're doing the exact same thing again. And I think that's the point at which I was like, kind of set you off. It was like, Rachel, let's just look through everything that we've collected this yeah. year and yeah. see what you find. Yeah, it was like, it was like a slow build almost. Like it was really exciting, like the first couple of times we saw it. But then once we noticed, like, it wasn't just a one off thing. And it was actually a pattern that we were seeing a lot, like way more than we thought. We were like, oh my God, there's really, there's really something cool going on here. And what we've kind of started to piece together since then, which I think is so interesting, is, you know, this isn't a rare behavior. This isn't an unusual behavior. This is a major part of their social lives. You know, yeah. um, we're now seeing this behavior in more encounters than we're not, right? Like, most of the time we're going out to observe whales with the drone, we see at least one pair of whales doing this behavior together. And I think you were the one who initially kind of started looking back at the video and noticed that we do actually have these cases where we see whales grabbing the ends of these stalks and actually doing something with them, right? Like they're not, they're not finding little lengths of kelp this long and that are just randomly floating at the surface. They're finding what we found, right? These complete floating stalks with the bulbs intact. They're grabbing it by the end actually, you know, consciously tearing off a piece that they can use for this behavior. Yeah, it is like uncannily, like this exact same motion they make when they're like breaking a fish to share it, like that quick tear. It's, yeah, so similar. Yeah, I think it is. Like when you don't have thumbs, when you don't have hands yeah. or paws or anything to, you know, keep something in place, you end up having to use drag and inertia and your teeth 
to pull stuff apart. And I, I think that extends to the actual behavior itself when they're rubbing together. Um, something that one of our reviewers pointed out, actually, after we, you know, submitted this paper that's now in the paper, is that animal tool use tends to either be using your mouth or your hands or, you know, paws. Animals either are manipulating objects with their, with their mouth or with, you know, some limbs. And what's interesting here is that these whales are, you know, they're initially manipulating it with their mouth to get it, you know, detached to get it in place. But once it's in place, it's all in their body movement. It's all in these, you know, strong pumps of the fluke and these really, you know, some big movements, but some really quite subtle adjustments that they're doing to get, keep this kelp in place. You know, it's this two, le two foot length of plant right. between these huge animals, these massive animals, and they're somehow keeping track of it and manipulating it between them without using any limbs at all, right? It's all just their, the core of their body. I'm trying to remember when we first saw it, did we immediately think like, oh, this is probably some kind of tool use? Or I, I, I feel like we were initially, especially before we realized that everyone was doing it all the time, I think we initially yeah. kind of thought of it more as a case of, you know, really kind of object-oriented play. Yeah, definitely. And especially before we actually got clips where we saw them breaking off the pieces, I think we were really right. unsure or like hesitant to say anything about tool use. Yeah, and like you're saying, before we saw that it was just everyone doing it with everybody, we were seeing a lot of younger whales doing it with older whales. And yeah, I think, I think we... We were thinking play as well, but once, yeah, once we got more pieces, once we saw those videos of them actually breaking off the pieces intentionally, I feel like it became just more clear. Once we yeah. realize that it's not, you know, when animals are chasing each other around and doing these surface active behaviors, all the stuff that we would kind of associate with play in killer whales and dolphins, it's whales while they're kind of in this slow resting behavior. It's whales in the middle of foraging will do this or in travel. Um, in some cases, I think we saw some, uh, a couple young whales doing this right after they failed to catch a fish, right? They chased down a fish, the fish got away, immediately grab a piece of kelp and rub it on each other. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's not this limited thing that's happening when they're playful and energetic, it's happening all the time. Yeah, and I think that was, like, some of the, the craziest, or one of the craziest parts, right, is when we realized how often it was happening. It was like, oh, we're seeing it here. Oh, we're seeing it here again. Oh my gosh, wait, it's literally everybody, like almost all the time. We had, we had three or four pairs, I think, doing it all at once in one video. Um, and I think, I think that comes down to, you know, as they come around turn point, they're encountering more kelp. There's a big kelp forest there. Yeah. There's a lot of kelp at the yeah. surface. There's more potential objects to use for this behavior. Um, do you think, what, what do you think? Do you think that this is a relatively new behavior or do you think this has been going on for a really long time? Well, at least as far back as we have the drone videos because, so basically I was still working on my master's project over the summer and that's why I started, I was going through older videos anyway for my master's project and um, that's when I noticed in, a, in very few videos because the video quality isn't as good, I noticed a couple instances where you could actually see right. the kelp. So at least as far back as like 2018, um, because we have videos yeah. where you can see the kelp, but we haven't actually quantified them yet. Um, and you know, the quality is not as good, but yeah, I don't know. The fact that it is all the whales, especially like young whales, like it is very much a learned behavior that they continue to do throughout their lives. It doesn't just stop after they're juveniles. Yeah, I mean, post-reproductive females, um, since we submitted the paper, this isn't, you know, part of the analysis in the paper, but we've seen L25 out of kelping now, and that's our oldest whale in the population. You know, she's, she's probably, right. she might be yeah. in the 90s. Um, right. And yeah, it definitely doesn't stop. I, I also think it's really interesting, you know, we've been doing these drone observations with the bigs killer whales, with the mammal-eating killer whales as well, with the same cameras and, and the same everything. And at least so far, we haven't seen them do this behavior. They play with kelp, you know, we see them play with kelp, we see them swim through kelp. They're, they're also very social. It's not like bigs killer whales aren't socializing with each other, but we haven't seen this specific behavior yet, which I think really goes to your point that this, you know, 
we say in the paper, and I think it's a strong hypothesis, that this is a socially learned cultural behavior um, that the Southern residents have developed. You know, it, it, I'd love to dig into other killer whale populations and see, do Northern residents do it? Do, do Alaskan residents do this? Um, both of those populations, you know, will will do a different kind of, you know, social skin-oriented behavior. They'll both rub on these smooth rocks at these rubbing beaches. Whereas Southern residents, I think it's really interesting, have never been observed beach rubbing, but we now right. have the ability to see these more cryptic, you know, hard to observe behaviors like, like aloe kelping. Um, yeah, to me, it's just great to be able to, you know, to, to see and to learn that there is still so much we don't know about these whales and about their lives, including things that turn out to be pretty big parts of their life, you know? Like you're saying, we're seeing it all the time between all age sex classes. Everybody seems to do it. You know, we haven't yet observed every animal in the population doing it or even every member of J-Pod, but every time we go out, we're seeing one or two new animals do it. There's every indication that it's a kind of universal um, behavior. And right. the fact that there could be a universal, common social behavior um, involving to potential tool use in this population, which is the single most well-studied population, certainly of killer whales anywhere in the world, maybe one of the most well-studied populations of mammal anywhere in the world. The, the fact that after, you know, almost 50 years of study, we're still learning new things about their lives, I think just goes to show how um, kind of complex and 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 interesting these animals really are um and yeah I, I think i think it really emphasizes how much you know we might have killer whales in the world but if we don't have southern resident killer whales specifically then we really kind of lost out on something exactly it's like and i feel like you are always saying this michael but it's really like just another incredible example of how special their culture is like as not just killer whales generally, like you're saying, but the southern resident killer whale population. We haven't observed any other whales doing this, even the St. Patrick Biggs. We've gotten lots of examples of videos of them playing with kelp, but we have yet to actually observe them doing it. And yeah, it just is another reason why they are so unique, so special, and another indication of why it is so important that we are still studying them today, because we're still finding new things important parts of their culture that we obviously want to protect that, yeah, aren't just going to pop up anywhere again. I think it's crazy to think about, like you're saying, the amount of contact that we know, we have known that is so important to them. Like we've always known that they spend lots of time in contact with each other. Ever since we've gotten the drone videos, we've known that. And to get this added piece of the puzzle with you know, just a little bit of new technology and some new observations. We have this entire new facet of the behavior that we're now studying. Crazy. So crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it opens up a whole new branch of research for us, I think, that is, I'll say, very new for me, right? I'm not a tool use specialist. Right. I don't study animal tool use. At least I didn't. I study animal social behavior and animal, you know, social dynamics and social structure. But what's so cool here is exactly what you're saying, you know, this is a type of object use, potentially, you know, a type of tool use that seems firmly planted in the realm of social relationships and social interactions. Um, it might also be having this, you know, benefit to skin hygiene. We found some evidence um, in our analysis that whales with more dead skin on their body are doing this behavior more. Um, we. I'm really interested to, you know, in, in quantifying that more uh, precisely. But regardless of what, you know, hygiene benefits it's having, it's it's a social interaction. And what we're seeing is that this is happening between kin and between similarly aged individuals. And I, I think it's really fascinating that the first example of this kind of you know, potential tool use in, in Southern residents or really in any killer whales that we find is in the social worlds. Um, because these whales are so strongly, inherently social. Every part of their lives is about their social identity, their social units, their social relationships, that it, it, it almost makes some sense, right? That where you're gonna need some extra help and some extra um, 
some extra spice in your interact in your in your life in terms of using tools is is going to be in that social realm. Definitely, and just yeah, going back to something you said earlier, it takes quite a lot of I mean, just from our eyes, skill and maneuverability for them to be doing this without, like you're saying, any use of hands or really not even using their teeth. Like, I mean, we see really young calves doing that kind of behavior with their moms all the time when they just have no control of their body whatsoever. Like, they're, you know, that, that makes sense. They're trying to get some kind of spatial awareness going on. But to see, yeah, when whales continue to use that and yeah, yeah same sex classes, female, adult females doing it with each other, just, yeah, crazy. Yeah, I, I think there's gonna be a lot um, that we're gonna learn in the next few years, kind of looking at who's doing it and how they, how these skills develop, um, when they start developing, and you know what the what the benefits of it are. You know, does it help build your relationships? Does it improve your skin health? Is it a reflection of your kind of your health and your social well-being and your 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 physical well-being? I I think there's going to be a lot we can uh, we can learn in the next few years by continuing to observe and, and document this behavior. Definitely, definitely. Being able to, yeah, go back and quantify our old videos and then also all of this going forward. We have so much to look at. It's going to be really cool.